Hello there and welcome back to Arctic Retro and uh, today I have another uh, mail and donations video the June 2021 edition and in today's episode I have a few interesting items a couple of great donations uh, MSX computer some stuff I purchased myself so I hope you will enjoy this uh, video and as usual the best things comes last so uh, I encourage you to watch the whole video. <laughs> This package uh, came delivered to my door uh, by DHL and uh, it is sent from Poland. Just took, uh, I think, four days. Quick. And this is something I need uh, all the time. <laughs> Let's see what it is. There it is, it's a power supply for uh, C64, C128 and C1541 from Keylog. And this has the European plug and uh, yeah, it uh, uses uh, 230 volts. And uh, I have a couple of uh, Keylog uh, power supplies from before and uh, they have been really good. So. Uh, I needed another one and uh, here it is. The connector here is for uh, the Commodore 64 but uh, you can easily modify it for um, the Commodore 128 or uh, the 1541 or 1571, 1581 floppy drives. Here's a small envelope sent from the United Kingdom and uh, yeah the shipping was uh, 325. This is also some uh, necessary equipment if you have a Commodore 64 and it says uh, video cable uh, 1. So that's it. Commodore composite video AV lead can be used for uh, most Commodore machines. And I highly recommend getting one of these if you uh, have a Commodore 64 instead of using um, the RF modulator output because this gives a lot better uh, picture quality. Uh, not the best there is of course but uh, this is a great improvement and uh, it's cheap. I think it was only 7 or 8 uh, UK pounds. This package uh, is sent from uh, Norway and uh, it is sent from a friend and uh, it is a donation, I guess. <laughs> maybe, maybe I did offer uh, to pay him, uh, but uh, I am doing a little bit of um, old PC related stuff and uh, Therefore, I needed a keyboard uh, with a, a AT connector or the uh, five pin DIN connector, and uh, my friend Shell Ove or Koiro uh, was about to send me one, but uh, uh, unfortunately, he didn't have one that worked properly, so he used this uh, Lenovo keyboard and he made a um, contact for me that is uh, <laughs> dual purpose, it has both a PS2 connector and a 5-pin DIN connector, so that's excellent and you can see a video on his channel about this. Uh, I'll link to that in the description. And this is some real good uh, anti-static packing material, so <laughs> I guess I'll keep that one. I was actually starting a video where I use this motherboard here and <laughs> this was how far I came because I realized I didn't have a, a keyboard that fitted or a, a adapter that could work. 
it just says keyboard error here so let's see if this uh, keyboard uh, works you need a keyboard to enter the BIOS uh, at least and then to actually use the machine I don't have a case to put this motherboard in uh, yet but um, that will come later so let me turn it on now with the keyboard inserted press F1 to resume yeah that worked it's in uh, BIOS however the colors is not correct <laughs> there's only gray it should be colors all right uh, this one came from uh, Oslo and uh, this is something I found on uh, fin.no the Norwegian uh, shop oh the excitement <laughs> not really I know what it is and you maybe see it too this is another keyboard oops <laughs> and the fact is I actually came across this keyboard right before um, Kjell Ove made uh, the keyboard <laughs> for me this is actually a keyboard with uh, old CNET which is an old um, PC manufacturer in uh, Norway and um, yeah it was quite cheap and uh, I might get use for it and uh, it has a PS2 plug so uh, can always be used on uh, some old PC related stuff here's a package from uh, Martin Löpstad and uh, this one is sent from Norway from uh, Trondheim and uh, well it's not from PCBWay but he obviously used uh, <laughs> uh, the box all right so uh, what do we have here some electronic components all right so this is actually a couple of um, Commodore 64 uh, uh, ROM adapters and this adapter makes it possible to uh, replace uh, the kernel and basic ROMs on the Commodore 64 or the charity ROM by uh, using a standard 27 512 um, EPROMs instead of um, the 2364 ROM chips that are originally in the Commodore 64 and Martin makes these and uh, he uh, sent me a couple of uh, these as a donation and uh, yeah really appreciate it there's one for the kernel ROM, one for the tractor ROM and one for the basic ROM and this one uh, what is this wow this is in fact uh, the GAL PLA PLA replacement chip for um, the Commodore 64 and I didn't know he's, he was gonna send me that one as well but uh, yeah that's a great surprise thanks a lot let me just test the chips right away this is the Commodore 64 KU motherboard that I have built myself you can check out the videos uh, on my channel and uh, here I have the original uh, three ROM chips and um, I have uh, the plankton PLA chip here so I'm gonna pull out uh, the PLA first there's a mark uh, where the notch go and it is this way here all right let's see yeah that seems to be working just fine excellent and then the other three ROM chips they are also socketed so no problem there and um, there are some jumpers as you can see on uh, this adapter that makes it uh, possible to switch between different uh, banks in uh, the EEPROM so you can have different uh, versions like one with the both Jiffy DOS or just the original kernel the basic ROM and then we have the kernel ROM
and these seem to be very good quality. Yeah, it seems to be very well made uh, with good uh, sockets and uh, they fit perfectly. All right, let's test. All right, that worked great. <laughs> nice. All right, that was uh, great. <laughs> now I have three extra Commodore uh, ROMs and uh, a new GAL PLA. Nice. Over to the next package. And this one is uh, sent from uh, the UK, I think. Uh, and it's a soft one. So uh, yeah, let's open it up. Not electronics, I guess. <laughs> All right, so this is uh, some t-shirts I ordered and uh, yeah, one is for uh, my son who uh, is a Roblox fan, so uh, he gets the Roblox shirt and I get a couple of uh, Commodore and uh, Atari t-shirts. Another small package from the United Kingdom and this is something I ordered myself and it says on the description, the diagnostic IC chip. So let's see what kind of chip it is. All right, there it is. Big box for small chip. <laughs> and this is, uh, I'm not gonna open it now, but uh, this is in fact an Amiga diagnostics chip because I actually don't uh, have one uh, like that, so. I got one and uh, yeah, let's see, it's um, diagram 1 to 1 for Amiga 500, 600, 2000 and total with shipping um, 952 pounds. Another little package and this one is from Spain and it's from Isabel Sanchez, which is a well known uh, name for me now. It is actually uh, amigastore.eu and um, yeah, let's see what I uh, purchased uh, this time. Uh, all right, so here we got a couple of uh, smaller items wrapped in uh, plastic. Uh, this is uh, <laughs> a cable I needed for um, uh, the Amiga 2000 project, which I uh, actually put on hold now, and this is uh, LED and uh, yeah, two LEDs for Commodore 64s. And uh, finally, I got uh, yeah a couple of um, battery holders for um, that can be used for in Amiga 2500 and those that has has this kind of battery that has leaked and you want to replace it with. Um, uh, coin cell battery like this and uh, these have the built-in uh, diode uh, that you need in order to prevent uh, the machine from charging the battery so these are just uh, spare parts that i'm gonna need uh, someday <laughs> next package is sent from uh, poland uh, let's take a look so what is this? Domcade.com uh, All right, so this is it. So this is a uh, SD to IEC and uh, yeah, can be used uh, for uh, Commodore 64 or VIC-20 machines uh, for uh, loading programs from um, SD memory card instead of uh, floppy disk. I already got a SD2 IEC from before but uh, that needs um, external power and uh, I think this don't need any external power because it takes it from uh, the joystick port or one of the control ports. Next up is this one. It is a quite a large flat package and uh, it comes from, let's see, Lithuania. So uh, I'll open it right away. <clears throat> this is something I purchased and uh, yeah, I know what it is. 
maybe not that retro uh, relevant, but uh, <laughs> there it is. Well, it's kind of retro relevant after all. It is an Atari sign, and this is a yeah, metal sign for um, some old Atari advertisement, and uh, they made it look like it's uh, rusted on the sides. I'll take it out of the plastic so it doesn't shine that much on the camera. There it is, yeah, nice one. It's just cheap metal, but uh, I paid uh, almost nothing for it. So I'm gonna hang it on the wall uh, here in uh, my lab. Final package of this episode, and uh, this is not from uh, DigiKey. Uh, this is actually another package from uh, a viewer and it is a great donation from uh, Martin Dam Löpsta and uh, yeah this is uh, really exciting for me uh, let's open it up and see what it is so it seems to be uh, very uh, well packaged and uh, it's a cover it says Philips lots of plastic I think I have a uh, several tens of meters of this <laughs> plastic because I uh, actually save um, some of it. <laughs> All right, so this is a computer and it is the first time I have uh, such a computer in my lab. And it is a computer and it is a Philips made in Japan. There it is. Let's take a closer look at it. So this is in fact a Philips VG8235 computer and it is a MSX computer. And I have never had an MSX computer before. So uh, this will be interesting to explore. Um, looks uh, very nice. Um, yeah, a little bit worn <laughs> where the wrists are resting, but uh, I guess that's normal. A great donation again from uh, Martin and um, yeah this will be a fun uh, project to make video about uh, at the later stage. All right let's see if we can uh, hook it up and uh, test if it's working. The machine uh, just came as this without any cables or anything but uh, as we can see it's just a simple AC 220 volts uh, input and uh, for the video output it has a monitor but i don't know uh, what kind of signal and uh, yeah what kind of cable i need uh, but it has a tv modulator and um, it's uhf channel 36 pal Let me tune the TV into uh, channel 36 and then we'll turn it on and see what happens. Okay, time to test. One, two, three. All right, there is picture. And the floppy drive is uh, <laughs> spinning up. But the uh, picture quality is of course uh, <laughs> very poor uh, since it comes through uh, an old RF modulator. I'm gonna try and uh, adjust the image just a bit. So that's the best and uh, it's a kind of a narrow, <laughs> narrow uh, text area. Pressing the reset button and the MSX uh, logo came and it has 128 kilobyte of RAM that's uh, excellent all right I'm gonna explore uh, this machine further in another video later uh, just for now it is working uh, very exciting very excited about this machine and again thanks a lot to Martin 
who sent me this. Alright, that was it for this month's uh, mail and donations video and I hope you enjoyed the content and uh, thanks a lot for uh, watching and uh, special thanks to my patrons. Uh, see you, bye bye!